What's cracking the show? I'm boy, Mr. Criminal, and I want to present our sponsors of the week. That's right. The Bonnie and Clyde Show and Mr. Criminal on air live are sponsored by Illegal Image Clothing. That's right. You can check them out at www.illegalimageclothing.com. And then we got my homeboy that's getting everybody ready for the summertime, getting yoked up, getting all proper and stuff. JB underscore fitness. That's right. JB underscore FTNS on Instagram. You can check him out. Follow him. Get your resumes right. And then we got my brother punching back in L.A. County. His name is Attorney Rosenberg. That's right. Follow him at Attorney Rosenberg on Instagram. And you guys can follow him. He's punching back. Defending Southern California. Then we got my people at L.A. Kush. Los Angeles Kush with some of that good. They came through with some of that blood walker. Some of that uh, OG. Julio G came through with it. I want to give you guys the props and shout outs. Matty Ice Fitness. My personal trainer. His baby girl. Mr. Criminal. We are trained by Matty Ice Fitness. Give him a follow. We're getting our regimens right. We're getting our nutrition in. We're getting our workouts crazier than ever. All because of Matty Ice. So I want to give a salute up to Rap Kings. That's right. Rap Kings underscore LV. If you guys want to get your walls, businesses wrapped, uh, vehicles, they do it all. So make sure you guys let them know that Mr. Criminal sent you. And last but not least, we got Trade Craft Farms. That's right. The homie Daniel Rodriguez of the USC pulled up this week and uh, tapped in with a bag of that Trade Craft. And we've been in touch. So I want to give a shout out to all our sponsors. Make sure you guys give them a follow. Make sure you guys give that your name. Now you're starting to catch attention from other artists, other labels probably wanting to work with you, stuff like that. How did the whole connection in the beginning come with Little Rob? Because I know in the beginning you guys were doing an album. And I remember as a fan, clearly, that I was disappointed because I was like, man, these fools sound hard together, right? And then when you opened up the album and it said, coming soon, the mayhem clicked. Yeah. And that shit never came. I was like, what the fuck happened? Yeah, so, all right, so it's crazy because that first show that I did at Club Vibe, yeah. opening up for a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. Little Rob was there as a spectator. Oh, shit. He was front row right there with this girl. And they were, you know, they were there through the whole show. And when I got off stage, Little Rob approached me. And he was like, hey, dog, you know, dope shit. I like, I like your shit a lot. You know, I'm a little, I go by Little Rob. I said, oh, cool, homie, mucho gusto, you know? Yeah. And that was that. At the time, I didn't really know who he was. I never heard of Little Rob. And I'm from SD, and, and, and I, I didn't really hear from him, you know? Yeah. So, time goes by, and when I was 14, I met Little One. Damn, that's hella young. I was riding around with Night Out, because, you know, Night Out's from our neighborhood, rest in peace. And he would take me, we, we used to go to Johnny J's house in Palmdale and to you know, fucking Damn. Halloween parties and party with Big Psych and Thug Life and, and you know, crazy shit, dog. I yeah. mean, I met Sir Jinx there. I mean, I'm, I mean crazy people. And um, one time... We went to uh, Little One's house, and I was like 14 years old, dog. And, you know, me, me and Little, that's my brother, you know what I mean? But back then, we kicked off a, a cool relationship, you know what I mean? Like, we, we vibed off each other and shit, and, and at the time, I wasn't serious about my music yet. I was only 14. I didn't do music till I was 16. So I was just, I was just meeting people, you know? And, and um, after I did that show in Vibe, and I already knew Little One. Little One somehow knew Little Rob. So this one time, Little Rob said, uh, Little One said, hey, darling, meet me at the park uh, by my mom's house. So I said, cool. So we pulled up, and it was him and Little Rob. And that's when I really, really met Little Rob. And he's like, yeah, don't remember in TJ? I was like, oh, yeah, I was cracking, homie, you know? And that's when I found out that he was rapping, you know? So... When I turned 15, we started kicking it like super tough, like really, really tough. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking, he'd be at my mom's house every single day after work. He would go pull up and he lived like 35, 40 minutes from me. So every day after work, he'd fucking go to my house. He'd be drinking his 40. I'd be fucking smoking my gin on my shit. And, and then um, once I started buying beats, he was still going to my house. And I just started getting on my songs and shit. Yeah. So we said, you know what? Let's do this Shadow and Little Rob, a.k.a. The Mayhem Click. He's like, all right, cool. So we started recording songs and songs and songs. But then about five or six songs into it, we had a fallout. And being that I, I was paying and buying all the beats and paying for the, you know, studio and all that shit, I kept the songs. So that's why Little Rob is featured on so many songs until I die. 
You know what I mean? But that was supposed to be Shadow and Little Rob the Mayhem click album. That makes album. sense. That makes sense. You know? So yeah. so he went his way. You know, he, he went and got radio play and videos and got, you know, major label shit. I stayed underground. I was making good-ass money underground. So I was like, nah, you, you do that, dog. You know what I mean? I mean, we didn't talk anymore, so I was like, do your thing. But that's how that shit came about. That's why he's on my record so many times. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that you say that because I could relate to that again with you. I, I, I've been in situations where I had majors try to sign, and uh, I've had people try to sign that I was no, not interested in it because I want to have control over my own shit. Yeah. And, and I think it's important that a lot of people think that the glitz and glamour comes from signing or giving up your, your rights and all that. But at that point, you become an artist of somebody else's, you know, yeah. stuff. It, it, you have two destinies. You could either play that and then go that route and then have to completely change your music and make radio music and stuff. And if it's meant for you, it's meant for you. But if this underground shit and this street shit is meant for you, you got to embrace it because yeah. there's so much love on these streets, especially yeah. with Chicano rapping. No no disrespect to that because that was, a, that was a dream for me too. Like, Little Rob also influenced me. You influenced me on, as being my favorite rapper, right? But I think he influenced everybody in the game as far as trying to get that radio success, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, a lot of rappers, that's, that's their dream. Yeah, straight up. I want to come out and I want to get signed and I want to do the videos and I want to be... You know, on that red carpet shit. Yeah, <clears throat> I didn't. Dog. Yeah, like, fuck it, with it. that never, that never, that never moved me. Like, money moved me more than that shit. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to wait ninety days to get paid for my first check on, yeah. you know, on sales and all that shit. Like, and I, I would read contracts, dog, and I would go to my, an attorney and get him, you know, uh, basically in layman's terms, you know what I mean, so I can understand it because yeah. you know they fucking word it to where it, it, it fucks with you, it fucks something up. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean, so. I would go get it and translate it into normal person fucking, you know, lingo. And they're like, well, they're trying to lock you down for fucking five years. Damn. Or they're trying to lock you down for five albums in six years or whatever the fuck the case was. And it was like, damn, for this much money? But then you got to make that money back before you get paid? I'm like, hell no. Nah, fuck that. Nah. Yeah. Recoup. You know what I mean? Like, you learn the recoup game. Yeah, yeah, the recoup game. And it's like, fuck that. I'd rather, I'd rather make my record, you know, sell, sell whatever, tens of thousands of units. And sell that motherfucker, cause I'm gonna get another big chunk of money. Wouldn't I do that, you know? And that's the reason why my name is is so hoard out on different labels, different distributors, is because, you know, at 18 I got married and had my two kids, you know what I mean? So I needed I needed money to come in quick. Yeah. I didn't have 90 days to wait. You're trying to pay bills. Exactly. Yeah. So so I'm supporting my family. I'm paying bills, and I'm like that shit ain't gonna work for me, dog. So, you know, I would tell my boy like, hey, let's just drop another record, homie, and. He already has some money on the line. Okay, this person wants to buy it. Hell yeah, you know. So, so you guys went your separate ways. Whatever you guys' uh, personal shit was, that's 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 what it is. Yeah. Um, have you had a chance to ever speak to him again? Or he won't just... give me that chance. Damn. I've called. I've called him out. I've called him out to talk to me. I, I've I've reached out to him. Uh, he avoids me at all costs. I don't know what 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 his feelings are about or what what he's stuck on. But I'm past that shit, dog. Like I'm. I'm married, he's married, has his family and shit. And, and I'll, I'll be straight out. It was over a female, dog. It was over a female, but I didn't do wrong, homie. Like, he pushed me to do wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't believe me. He claimed that he was my brother, homie. And when I came to him about his broad being fucking foul, he didn't believe me. He mm. accused me. Wow. So I was like, okay, you want to accuse me, dog? And I'm over here trying to be loyal to you and telling you what the real get down? Now I'm gonna prove to you what kind of dog I can be. Yeah, and that's how I went down, homie. You know what I'm saying? And and everybody knows Excited One and Excited Part Two is about that. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know I just learned you know, shit. And maybe mommies were banging that shit. <laughs> and maybe and maybe that's and maybe and maybe that's what the fuck is going on with him, and he can't get past that. Yeah. But he pushed me to that, dog. Yeah. I didn't do it out of spite. Like I'm gonna be a fucking, I'm gonna be a backstabber. I'm a fucking, I'm gonna do him dirty. Nah, he pushed me to do that. You know what I'm saying? And and the reaction that I got from him, me trying to be fucking loyal, faithful as a, as a brother and telling him like, hey, your girl's out of line, homie. Mm -hmm. You need to check her or get rid of her. And instead fucking going crazy, kicking walls. And, fuck you. I knew this. I knew that. Like, what the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me right now, dog? You're really going to fucking accuse me of doing something that I didn't do or didn't plan on doing? Well, now I'm going to prove to you what the fuck could really be. And yeah. that's what I did, dog. And that's why, 
you know, whatever happened, happened. And I don't know if you can't get past that shit, but come on, dog. We're fucking grown ass in our 40s, dog. Yeah. Like, like, what what the fuck? You know what I mean? There was a time where, where E-Dub and Kool-Aid were fiddling with the idea of us boxing it out on a pay-per-view match. Oh, they would love that. You know what I mean? I'm not not saying the fans. I'm saying the, the, the powers that be. Yeah. They want to always see us Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, they would love that. Because that would have sold. Yeah, that would have sold. And I agreed. Yeah. I didn't even ask the amount of money they would give us. Yeah. I said, hell yeah, let's We're do it. ready to get it. And I don't know who they contacted of his people, but he declined. Damn. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I do shows, and, I, and he finds out I'm booked at this show that I'm going to be there. He will avoid me, dog. That's fucked up. And I think that time... That I ran into him in Riverside at the Latin lockdown that my boy Uno threw. Mm-hmm. We were we crossed paths because we, I was backstage, he was backstage. He was going that way, I was going this way, and we just crossed paths. And he looked at me, we 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 shook hands, hugged it out, took a picture, and I was like, oh shit, okay, maybe from this right here we could pick up and fucking the dog. If if we did a fucking album or even a song right now, yeah, it'd be like Tupac and Biggie doing a song. Huge, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like the fuck, the impact that shit would have. Legendary. Is crazy. Hey, I'm telling you as a fan, I want to see that shit happen. So I if mean, I if I could be on a song with King Little G, and that was some shit that back in the days, I'm gonna keep it one thousand. I was just on the phone with uh, Young Dopey the other day. He's like, "Me and your neighborhood had problems back in the days, but see how as men we get past it, right? Yeah. It's no secret our neighborhood beef. Like I'm really from my soil, he's really from his soil. Yeah. And we had to look past it. We're grown men now. Like, what am I doing? Still holding on to some shit that's that's been. 20 something years old You know what I'm saying Like come yeah. on homie I'm out here bossing up I'm with my family Like let's keep it 1000 Am I really out there Really pushing that Or am I pushing this This positivity yeah. So I had to look in the mirror And say you know what I could swallow my pride I could do this This is bigger than my shit This is for the culture And this yeah. is one of the biggest moves That the culture has seen In over 20 years So if you did that as well With Little Rob I think that shit would just be as Just as monumental If not bigger Because you guys were doing this Since before You know what I'm saying And it's crazy dog Because we've had people from my boy Flossie, my bro Uno, reaching out to him like on some friendly shit like, hey dog, here's a beat. Why don't we do something for the culture? It was at, at one point it was gonna be Night Out, Little Rob, Little One and Shadow on a song. Yeah. And he declined it. Damn. And then another time it's gonna be me, him and Uno. And he declined it. One time I got at him, he didn't even respond to my shit. He's seen it. And we see him on, on Little One's Stories and shit, and he, yeah. he be peeping everything out, dog. You know, but so he's he's got his eyes on everything. Yeah, he just he just rather stay in his own zone and shit, which I respect that. But hey, come on, bro, like get get past it between me and you. Let's let's get past that for our people, our fans, bro. Yeah, because it's millions of them, and they all deserve to get at least one more record, one one song. Yeah, you know what I mean, out of me and him for the people, because everywhere I go, dog, that's. The number one question they always ask me. Wondering you and Rob ever going to do something. If you go on fucking comments and, and different fucking uh, podcasts and different different fucking uh, IGs and shit. That's what they want. That's what they want. That's what they want. You guys are denying them. Yeah. And just like I was denying my people with the King Little G shit. Yeah. That was the number one comment on his shit, my shit. When we spoke, it was like, homie, this they've been wanting this shit for years. Like, yeah. why are we denying them this shit? Like, this is fucking being selfish. You feel me? Like, what exactly. the fuck are we doing, homie? So... I'm going to call out the homie Little Rob right now. And I'm calling you a homie because we're from the, under the same program. Um, and we all should, should show respect. I mean, it's supposed to be United Raza, right? Yeah. So I believe that, that that's what we do. We stand here with pride. And I've been squashing my beats. I've been standing next to people that people never thought I was standing next to. And I'm one of the highest selling, if not the highest selling Latin rap artists in the last 20 years, homie. So if I could do my shit and put my pride to the side and, and step down from my throne and say, I'm going to go stand with another king, then the motherfuckers need to get their shit together. And I think that Rob, Rob needs to swallow his pride come to the table and let's do this shit for the community homie and i'm saying it from your homeboy mr criminal straight up yeah. that's what it is and uh my lines open anytime fingers knows what it is uh you know he could reach out i know they got something popping rob knows me i mean we spoke before he showed a lot of love and uh we never left on bad terms but i think the culture the culture and the community is calling you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we got all eyes on us right now. The whole motherfucking world's watching. Chicano rap is bubbling higher than it ever has been. And uh, we're getting it back into a position where we're owners, we're leaders, and, and we're in positions to control our own destinies.